Welcome everyone to another Wednesday night of Fundamentals to Gain Inner Peace with your host, Coach Menachem Bernfeld. Wherever you are, whether you're on vacation in the country or listening to the recording, let's start off just a second. Okay, thanking our sponsor, OK Clarity. OKClarity.com is a place to find top-notch therapists, coach, or nutritionists. Their professionals are vetted and have extensive experience working with the Jewish community. If you're in the market for a therapist, coach, or the like, or if you are a wellness professional looking to get more online exposure, go check them out, OKClarity.com. They also have a WhatsApp group you can join. The number is 917-426-1495. That's 917-426-1495. So let's get started. Get grounded. Take a deep breath, no matter where you are. And uh, you can put both feet on the floor, get grounded, feel your feet on the floor. Take another deep breath. Come into the room, become present. Be in the here, in the now. You become aware of your surroundings. Where am I? My environment. And then we turn inwards to see how, how do I feel? What do I feel? Where do I feel it? What did my day look like? Am I tired? I want to go to sleep. Stressed? There's a lot of things on the list that were not get, didn't get done yet. And you're here. It's probably hard. Just become aware of whatever it is. Okay, so here we are. So let's get started. Tonight, you might need a pen and paper. We're gonna ask some questions, go a little bit slower to see um, if things come up. But be before we start, just to imagine that we fully accept ourselves. The goal really is Get the self-love, to really love yourself no matter where you are. But I know that's a challenge for many. And we're not going to go there right away. But the step before that is to just accept self-acceptance. Accept myself with all the parts. Imagine you don't have to hide. You don't have to pretend. You're accepted, you accept yourself, people around you accept you. You could just be. You, you can embrace, embrace yourself, even if you're not perfect. And the result, if I can accept myself, if I can love myself, I can then accept and love others for who they are. They don't need to change. They also have their things. Just like I do. No one is perfect. We all have ups and downs. You have your things. Call it wherever you want. The dark side or things that you're scared people shouldn't find out. But imagine we accept it. So it's really you should be able to accept yourself. If I can accept myself with all those parts, what would it feel like? What would it look like? So there are seven steps that we're going to do tonight. Basically going through seven ideas, a few questions. If you can write them down, I'm going to go a little bit slower so you can write them down. But you can always listen to the recording. And then when things come up, you can pause and, and sit there for a moment. See what comes up when asked these questions. So here we go, first step. 
looking at yourself, what do you see? Your self-perception. What do you see when you look at yourself? When things don't work out, things are not going the way you planned. What's the reaction? How do you react? When you're hard on yourself. What does it look like when you're hard on yourself? Try to remember the, the last time that you were going through something, something didn't work out. You were in the low moods, not in the good moods. What were those voices? What were they saying about you? What's something that you don't like about yourself? Whatever comes up, just write them down. Okay, so now the question is going to be, why? Where do these thoughts come from? And why do you look at yourself that way? Again, it could be positive or negative. Just seeing from where it comes from, usually we pick up. It could be a relationship that we had influenced the way we think about ourselves. Maybe socially or in the childhoods. Just becoming aware of why do I think this way? If if the thoughts were positive, you can think back of somebody who made you feel good, empowered you, made you um, you know, that relationship that you had, the positive relationship. And if you had some negatives come up, you can probably go back to when you were younger. Could be at home, could be in school. And it could be social media, media that make you feel a certain way, make you feel like you're not getting the results you want, or maybe you're not as rich as you want. It looks like everybody out there is managing and you're not. That could be, that's influencing the way you're thinking. So the question is, why do I think that way? And see if something comes up. Step number three is we're going to challenge those negative beliefs. Maybe it's not true. So you think about the things that you say about yourself. Some people consider themselves just being a failure. Or when you're hard on yourself, when things are not working out, what are those voices? So you might say, it never works out. Things never work out. That's something you can challenge. Is that true? Is it 100% true? Because people feel that it's true. And if I ask them, is it true? They'll say yes. But is it 100%? Is it always Things never work out. Not never, but most of the time. Oh, okay. We got a little bit of a change over there. So when you say, I am a failure. Always, in all areas, there's nothing positive. Yeah, maybe small things. So we take it to the extreme. If you say it 100%, I am a failure. And you can say it you're like loud. I am a failure. Really? So we start questioning those beliefs that we have, the beliefs that come up, to see if it's really true. We challenge the thought. 
And like we mentioned many times, if somebody, if a friend would tell you, um, I feel like a failure, nothing is working out, how would you react to a friend? So now it's not you, it's easier. So see how you react to a friend. And now let's see, do you react the same way to yourself? Or to yourself, it might be a little bit harder, but we can question why and imagine that you're talking to somebody else and deal with yourself the same way you would deal with a good friend. So that's part of challenging the beliefs that come up. Now let's go to the positive sides. What's something that you've done in the past that make you feel proud about yourself? You can write them down. Just let things come up. And if nothing comes up, be aware of that. And you're not the only one. Many people, when you start talking about positives, they blank out. So just become aware of that. Think of something that you feel proud of looking back, whether it's something recent or something years ago. You just feel proud of that move, that act that you did. You were part of something. Something good about you. What are your special talents? Write down two talents that you have. Any two that come up, it might be a little bit hard, but any two talents. And if it's hard for you to write down any, what would somebody else say about you if you would ask them? Give me two talents that I have. What would they say? Write it down. Even if you disagree and you don't believe in it, but write down what other people would say. Beautiful. If you have other things coming up and you need more time, you can always pause if you're listening to the recording. Step number five is self-compassion. What does it look like when you're kind to yourself? Do you treat yourself the same way you treat friends? Are you able to forgive yourself on those things that you need to forgive yourself? Maybe it was mistakes. Are you able to forgive yourself or it's too hard? And become aware. Are you aware of the things that you know that you shouldn't forgive yourself on certain mistakes, the things, decisions you made in your life? And you just can't look back. Too painful. And when you do find yourself in a low mood, a little bit upset, what are the things that you do that makes you feel a little bit better? The self-care that we discussed. What are some self-care practices, something that you do that help you, that you need, and it makes you feel better. Self-care could help 
to gain a little bit of self-compassion. If you know what you need and you take care of yourself, you can understand that it's okay not to be perfect and we do make mistakes and that's fine. Some people have a hard time practicing self-care. So are you aware of what self-care practices do you do? Or maybe you're aware that you don't. And that takes us to the next step to celebrate humanity, to celebrate that we're human and that we're not perfect. And that's okay. Embrace, we embrace imperfection. The only way to grow is if we can love that part that we're not perfect. Looking back on the things that you've done in life, the things that you learned in the past. Did it come from making mistakes? The growth that you had usually comes from making mistakes. Things don't work the first time. You try a few times, you learn, and you grow. So looking back, looking back on your journey, on your growth journey to see that you grew from your mistakes. And it's okay to make mistakes and even encouraged. They say you should fail big because we have to fail anyways. In order to grow, we need to fail. Nobody gets it perfect. So if you're going to fail anyways, fail big. Then you can grow much more. But it's hard. So again, looking back and finding those imperfections, finding the growth that you had, from making mistakes. Maybe it's a new job, started off thinking you know nothing, figuring things out, making some mistakes until you know exactly what's going on. Or maybe it's just simply baking a cake. The first time you did it, maybe it didn't work out, second time was better. Amazing, embracing your imperfection. Looking back and seeing when things looked like it's not working out, but it turned out to be a lesson, a lesson in life. And the last step is to get better while accepting myself. Even though I accept where I am, we're looking to grow. And we discussed this many times. The growth that we're looking for, we wanna be better, we wanna to go to the next level, we wanna learn more. It could be coming from two places. It could be coming from a place where you feel that you're not enough. So you know what? I'll learn something more. I'll get better. And then I'll be enough. And then you find out that I'm still not enough. It's not filling up that hole. So that means you're not accepting yourself for where you are and who you are. You don't like the way you are. Putting everything on the table, you, there's certain things you don't like. And you think by maybe growing, learning more, doing more things, maybe doing more chesed even, will help you love yourself, like yourself. And then you realize it doesn't stop. It doesn't fill up that hole. So we're looking to fill up the, the hole, the self-acceptance, accept myself no matter what comes up. And I can still grow because we, we all want to learn. We want to get better for sure. And especially from a positive side, if you feel good about yourself, you'll be much more successful in whatever you want to do. You'll have the courage. You'll have the self-esteem. You won't get scared. 
and those negative voices, you'll be in control. Versus if you're coming from a negative place, after once or twice, you're going to give up. You'll say it's not working out. And then you'll stop. So growth should really be coming from a positive place, from a self-acceptance place. I accept myself and where I am, where I am now. And I'm looking forward for tomorrow, another day, to continue on my journey. Not because I'm not happy with where I am. So that, those are the two pieces, accepting myself and keeping on growing. So the question is, what's something that you're looking for, something that you want to grow, get better at? You might be in the middle of a project and you're looking forward to finish it. And what area in your life? You can write it down, something that comes up. But what's something that you've never thought about that you would love to maybe learn learn a new skill you don't have to but you would love to it would be nice you learn something new you want to improve in a skill improve in a talent if if you manage to write down talents before but sometimes people they don't down, write down their talent because they're not perfect. You know how to play the keyboards, but you've stopped many years. You know, you don't, there's so much more to learn, so you stopped. So now, if I would ask you, did you write down the talent playing keyboard? You'd say, no, that's not one of my talents. Why not? You know how to play the keyboard. Yeah, but there's so much more to learn. So you see what happens? Because you're not perfect, your mind says it's not one of your talents and you put it away. And it's not something you want to improve. But if you look at it as a talent, you say, yes, it's something I can do and I like doing it. And every time I do it, I improve, I get better. So it's more conscious, it's on the table, it's something that you can improve. So you see what happens with how our mind controls, puts away things and we don't look at it anymore. Or even if it's not perfect, we're okay and we, we can improve. Now, it doesn't have to be music. Whatever talent, whatever area in your life you would love to improve, to take it to the next level, it's only going to happen if you're okay with where you are and the level where you are. So what are small steps that you can take to improve? Could be at work, something you want to do different at home. Let things come up. Just something that might be you were interested for years ago and you haven't thought about it for a very long time. Or it could be a goal that you had many years ago, but you gave up thinking it's not working because you've tried and it didn't work out. So try it twice and three times and that's it but you can improve, you can get better. You can always bring it back on the map. So this is all to be able to accept ourselves, to have self-acceptance in order to get the self-love so that we can be a better person for ourselves and the people around us. The only way we can accept and love the people around us is if we learn how to do it to ourselves. But if we can't do it to ourselves, you say, you know, I'm already, whatever it is, it is not going to change. This is who I am. Let me focus on others. You won't be able to give that message. You won't be able to make them feel loved and accepted if you can't do it to yourself. And there are many reasons for that, whether it's validating communicating, listening. It's not easy. These, these are skills that take time. You need to learn it. And you have to start with yourself. Validate yourself when you make a mistake. So that when somebody in your life makes a mistake, it's okay. Think about it. When was the last time somebody around you, a spouse, a child, a coworker, made a mistake and it made you upset it makes more sense to make you upset i should accept the mistakes 
So become aware of that. Now, what do you do when you make a mistake? How do you accept yourself? It could be it's been a while thinking about yourself, but here we are to accept ourselves so we can get to self-love. We'll go back to the first question that we asked. Imagine yourself just being who you are. You don't need to hide any, anything. You're okay, even though you're not perfect. What would life look like? What would you be, be able to do? What would you be doing differently? And just to sit with that question. See what comes up. See what's holding you back. Maybe a thought. What are other people going to think? Or what do you think about yourself? What comes up? And think to yourself, well, what's if I accept myself and I'm okay with no matter what it is, no matter where I am, whatever level I am? You'll feel more, more empowered. You'll be looking forward. You'll be able to go to the next step. But if we can't accept ourselves, then we stop right there. It's not working out. And this is where I am. And that takes us to depression versus acceptance and self-love. So that's it for tonight. You can try it again, listen to the recording and stop by each question and see what comes up. I do want to mention that the next step, I'm not sure if it's going to be next week, but we'll see. From self-acceptance to self-love. One day I want to go there. I know it's going to be hard for many. Self-love. And uh, somebody mentioned to me a book, which sounds like the things we talk about. It could be you're aware of. It's the mirror work. It's work doing in front of a mirror. Sounds like it's a, a lot of work for many. You can try it. I don't know exactly how it works, but you can sit in front of the mirror, see what comes up, see how you talk to yourself, your relationship with yourself. But that's the mirror work. And I'm thinking of doing or just a few weeks. Maybe we'll do the chapters of the book. We'll see. But for now, self-acceptance before self-love, to accept myself, to accept my situation. That doesn't mean I'm staying where I am. I'm continuing to grow because I'm accepting myself and it's okay to make mistakes. I can try something new. I can go out of my comfort zone. And next week in Metz Hashem, next week I believe is Rishwadesh Elo. And that's a great time to see what comes up for many. <laughs> to see how you grew up with Rishwadesh Elo. What does it mean? Again, there are two sides to it. There are two sides to it. These positive, many people have positive vibes. Some people have negatives. Whatever it is, just becoming aware. But what we really should have is maybe both, but a lot of positives. If you only have negatives, you got to talk about it. So that's it for tonight. Thank you very much for joining. Thank yourself for taking some time off for yourself. Just relaxing a few minutes. I'm becoming aware of where I am, who I am, what am I looking for, what do I feel. And with that, you should have a good night and a beautiful, great week. And it's a shame we'll see you next week. Thank you.